Welcome to our fourth Lenten service at Christus Victor Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Stefan, and I'm so glad you are with us tonight. It is our first live feed service that we are sending out, and we are so glad you are with us. You can follow our Holden Evening Service on the screen. You can have the words there and sing with us as we usually do on um, Lenten uh, Wednesdays. We will have our services live feed on Saturday at 5 o'clock. You can tune in if you go to the uh, Christus Victor um, cvlutheran.org website and click on YouTube. As well, our 915 service, it will be a live feed, and our 1045 service will be... Um, will be the five o'clock service as a repeat. So please tune in and watch us um, online. We uh, developed a care, uh, a care connection tree ministry that uh, will specifically reach out to people who are home and we are all at home. So with phone calls and emails, if you're interested to be a part of this uh, ministry, you can contact the church office or me, and then we will uh, connect with you and support each other in this time. I want to thank you all for your continuous support uh, for our co uh, congregation, Christus Victor. You can uh, give an offering during this service or any time when you go to cvlutheran.org slash give or send an offering uh, to the church via mail or bring it to the church. Thank you, and let us now begin our service, the service of the light. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. No light, no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now.
Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For our word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light of life of all creation. May our prayers come before your God as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing and praise your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is from Jonah, the third chapter. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Here ends our reading, the word of the Lord. I have the great joy now to invite our speaker and introduce him to you. It is Pastor Joseph Chu. He is the Associate Director of Disaster Relief at the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. 
at the church-wide office. And he and his wife are worshiping and their children with us, and he several times shared the message during our weekend services, and we are very blessed to have him here tonight to share the Lenten meditation. So thank you, Pastor Chu, for being here tonight. Good evening, everybody. I think all of us are probably in the same boat the last few days as news comes in every day that in some ways bring us a lot of discomfort, to put it lightly. Well, because of what's been happening, the coronavirus, um, usually I would be working at, in the office on weekdays, but the last few days, just like many, many thousands and thousands of people around the world, in schools and everywhere, I've been working at home. And we have an opportunity to actually bring communities together through internet and through phones and whatnot. And, but at times like this, um, we're all scared. If I would probably lie to you if I tell you I have absolutely no fear. You know, at times like this, we have options of hunkering down or doing mission with care. You know, the with care part is really important. But disasters, which is a ministry that I have been in for the last many years, brings all kinds of dynamics in our lives. One thing we learn is in times of disasters, particularly when we are facing a lot of uncertainties and chaos, sometimes the darkest part of our personality, the darkest part of our lives and, and, and our mental state, if you will, kind of bring, bring into the forefront. One of the things that um, I've seen again and again during all kinds of disasters, even natural disasters, is somehow people would find blame for the origin of disasters. Now, some we can trace back to some human causes, but even natural disasters. Uh, my first encounter working with disaster was the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Some of us may remember at that time the tsunami uh, really killed a lot of people. It's a natural phenomena. There's no human being could be blamed, but afterwards we have encountered a lot of people and, and, and blaming, you know, this natural phenomenon to people, to a group of people, any group of people they think was doing sinful stuff and evoking God's punishment. I'm, I try not to blame folks, but I think what comes to me is in times like this, particularly when we're facing a lot of uncertainties, when the world around us is filled with unknown. It, we, we bring back some of those, those some of the this many, many deep down desperation in us and perhaps images of people we don't like and images of things that we don't like and, and we draw on God to support us in those kinds of dark moments. Reason why I say that is, with that in mind, we might be able to understand what happened with Jonah when God called him to minister to the city of Nineveh after he was being spit out by the big fish. So, you know, the book of Jonah actually is a very, is a, is a, a moral tale. It's a comedy of a sort. The reason why it becomes part of the, the, old, the, the, the Bible is not because it's funny, we need entertainment, although we need, but because of the deep lesson therein with the book of Jonah. So the part that Pastor Stefan have just read, four verses, is very short, but it's also quite interesting. It said the second time, this is the second time God called uh, uh, Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh to minister to the city. Now let's see what Jonah did. I have to say that if we were to give Jonah a grade, it is a D grade or even an E grade. 
it was that bad. Why did I say that? If you, read, uh, if you have time, just look at, look at the text together. So Nineveh, well, so Jonah went up after he, you know, he walked away from God, didn't want to go to the mission. And then, you know, uh, uh, the sailors, uh, he was in a boat and sailors thrown him into the waters and he was being swallowed by a big fish. Not so much a whale, by the way, is a big fish. And then getting spit out and all that stuff. And God told him to, to go back to the city again. So he did. He went to the city. Now the city was that at the time, at ancient time, about seven, eight, 700 years before Jesus, that probably was the biggest metropolitan city in the world, in the ancient world. Now, nothing compared to Chicago or anything like that, but it was huge in that, in that time. It usually takes about three days to walk through the city. So what did Jonah do? Did? What did Jonah do? He only walked a day. Just a day, one third. Now, he preached. The sermon was bismal. He says, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, the English translation was generous. It has how many words? Uh, you know, well, close to seven, eight words. In Hebrew, five words. A five word sermon. Any preacher could get, get by with five word sermons. I like, to, uh, I like to learn something from her or him. So, so he, what he was doing was he, was he was doing it grudgingly. He did not want to do that. And in fact, if somebody was, some commentator was saying he only preached not only just five words, but half of a very important sermon that God wanted him to preach. So where is the other half? So now, let me read, the, read, let me read the, uh, the sermon he preached again. The sermon he preached was, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown, or overturned, or shall be, you know, basically disappeared. Is that the kind of sermon that you and I want to listen to? It wasn't. I would, I mean, I would shut my ears. You know, the other part of the sermon he did not preach here. But he came out in his negotiation, his complaint to God. That sermon was actually in chapter 4, the first and the second verse. He said to God, well, he was really mad at God. Well, I'm not going to give out the rest of the story. Please come back next week, all right? Listen to the rest of the story. But at that point in his, in his conversation and argument with God, he said, God, I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. I'm sorry I didn't have PowerPoint with me, but it, 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 could, it would be great if we could put the two sermons, if you will, side by side. One sermon says, 40 days more, Everyone here, you'll be overthrown, you'll be killed, you'll be destroyed. But then the other one, he says, God, I know that deep down with all your punishing voices, with your anger, you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That, that is really the essence of God. But Jonah did not preach that message. Well, for very understandable reasons, people in Jonah's time actually understood him. You see, uh, Nineveh is not a good place to talk about. That's the capital of the ancient superpower, Assyria. If we go back to history, about 740 years before Christ, what happened was Assyria, that superpower, came into the Middle East, destroyed a bunch of con countries. Syria, well, the ancient Syria, not today's Syria. Syria, uh, but also uh, Israel at a time which comprised of 10 tribes, of the ten, uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Assyria destroyed it, not only destroying the city, destroying the people, but they tortured the people, did all the terrible things to the people. In fact, for 100 years afterwards, Jewish folks still suffering from the consequence, from the actions of the Syrians. So as a people, Assyria, Nineveh, was their enemy. 
they deserve to be, to, to, be, to, to, be, to be punished. God should punish them. God's grace should never reach them. But the point of the story is precisely because whoever in our mind is not worth God's love, God's love reaches to her, him, they, just like God's love reaches to you and me today. I have to say that today, there are several moments in those many conference, conference calls, I almost cry. I feel like crying when people talk about hope, God's hope. When people talk about God's love, regardless of what happening around us, regardless of who, whom other people think about me or who might think about other people. I heard so many pieces of good news in my conversations, casual conversations. And the essence of the casual conversations is really the real sermon that Jonah was asked to preach, which is, God is a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. No matter what happened to us, our global citizens, the next few weeks, there will be a lot of inconvenience. I don't, I don't have crystal ball. I don't know what to expect. But no matter what, I would hang on to Jonah's sermon that he did not preach in what we talk about today. But instead, the Jonah's sermon that he talked to God about and that came from actually Exodus, um, Exodus chapter 34, 6 to 7. If you have time, go back to read it, Exodus 36, 6 to 7, which says, God is a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. God is not here to destroy us. God is not here to destroy the people whom God loves. Hang on to the steadfast love. Go out and do mission in ways that is responsible, in ways that is careful. I think uh, Pastor Stefan probably can share with you some of the ways that we can reach out to our members, to the city, in a responsible way. In so doing, all of us, all of us will someday look back, regardless of what happened and see, God is indeed a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God's love is abounding. Hang on to it. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chu, for this wonderful, inspirational message. Thank you that you came to Christus Victor tonight and to share this. We all needed to hear that, that our God is with us, that our God's love is abundant and God will not let go of us. So we all needed to hear it. I am so thankful. Now it's time for us to share our offerings. You can go to christusvictorcvlutheran.org slash give. And uh, I'm very, very, very gracious and thankful for, for your giving and support. And let us now listen to beautiful music as we share our offerings.
The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come, your, your will, will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. peace and serve the Lord. Have a blessed night. See you next week.